Hello all, Old Geek here, and uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different to the norm in this video. I'd been thinking about doing this video for a while, I was trying to work out how I would script it, and then I decided, nah, script? Who needs one of those? Right, what you'll see on the screen at the moment is a sideways image of Against the Giants, which was the early 80s reissue of G123 as, I suppose, the first super module. Almost? Don't know. But uh, it combined G1, G2 and G3 into one 32-page um, adventure booklet. And it is, in my opinion, one of the best collections of adventures you can get hold of. So much adventuring packed into those pages. Now, the Giants modules um, started life as tournament adventures as so many modules did. They were the first modules ever officially produced by TSR for AD&D. Um, and as such, they have this special place in many of our hearts. They included a group of pre-generated characters. And thus, these were the, f the first official pre-gens for AD&D. &D. They were the characters taken from the tournaments that were used by those players in those tournaments when these modules were first done. Um, and I think that's awesome. But also I think how they've been set up and how they've been created gives us a little bit of an insight to maybe what was expected of players at those tournaments. Certainly looking back, I was too young to have competed at in, in these tournaments and it was a style of gaming that might be a little alien to what people think of nowadays but let's have a little look let's have a look a little look at those characters and specifically their names right i'm just going to scroll all the way down here we go now most of us, when we first saw these characters, these were originally in G1 and redone as well in uh, in G123. Now, what not I noticed in G1 is the spells weren't listed for the spellcaster, so I'm guessing it was, might have been a, a space issue because G1 was only eight pages. But I remember looking at these characters as a kid and thinking, what the hell? They were very powerful. A number of them are above the recommended level limit for the series, let alone G1. G1 was levels 8 to 10. And you see some of these, level 12, 13, 14. The series was designed for levels 8 through 12. So clearly it meant you didn't have to stick to those recommendations. And clearly they expected this series to be a challenge because you see there's a 14th level fighter in here. And there's nine characters. This is a big party of powerful individuals. But the focus here, I'm going to start with the names. Now, I'm going to say a big thank you here to a blogger back in 2011, a blogger by the name of Raging Swan um, delved into this. I started delving into all this this, this morning because um, I knew the names, the characters' names actually mean something. They're not gobbledygook. And I was finding all sort of conflicting things from Urban Dictionary and stuff like that. And I wanted the proper original meanings. And it was becoming quite difficult to pick those out. Um, because some of, these, some of them are very, very archaic. And this blogger, Raging Swan, found what they believe the book to be that Gygax himself used. Gygax used a lot of flowery old English in his, uh, in his writing. And it's almost certain that he had access to this book. It's called Pop Lollies and Belly Bones, published back in the mid 70s. Um, and all of these names are made up of words that are defined in Pop Lollies and Belly Bones, which is a book of definitions of archaic English terms. So let's go through it, shall we? Let's go through it and have a little look at the actual characters themselves. The first one is Gleep Werp the Eye Biter. Now, I agree with the blogger here, because if you look, the name is there, there is Gleep Werp. If we scroll up to his list of spells, 
Gleed. Gleep almost certainly was a typo. This should have been Gleed Werp, the eye biter. So what does his name mean? Right, Gleep. Gleed meant squint-eyed, one-eyed and crooked. Werp means a stone's throw or a glance of the eye. So, an eye biter is actually a species of fish. <laughs> That's something I learned this morning. Um, so, what is saying it casts his spells with a squinted glance of one eye? What a great name. And it sounds silly, Gleed Werp the eye biter. But when you actually get the meaning, it's fantastic. He was level 12. Um, noticeably, he's got 55 hit points. Let someone do the maths for me. With a, de with a constitution of 16, he's rolled almost maximum on his D4s to get 55 hit points. Yeah, yeah. Ah. So, level 12 magic user, 55 hit points. He's pretty powerful. He's got a wand of fire, he's got braces AC4, robe of blending, a scroll with some good spells on it, loads of healing potions. Most of the characters in here have healing potions. Well, they've obviously got some potion vendor that they've just cleared out, gone down to the local potion supermarket and gone bulk buy. Um, and his spells are listed up here. I'm having to turn my head to one side. Detect magic, charm person, magic, missile times two, knock, phantasmal force, web, haste, lightning bolt, monster summoning one, ice storm, charm monster, wall of ice, monster summoning two, magic jar, teleport, wall of stone, stone to flesh. He's potent. He's very potent. But there's not a lot of... There's no fireball in there when they're going into a wooden lair for the first one. And the summoning spells, haste, he's... Hey, he's a he's one aggressive magic user. That one oh he's got the wand of fire. Doesn't need fireball. Powerful character. Right, let's look at Cloyer Bolts the Magsman. Level thirteen thief. Thieves are often a little bit above the uh a little bit ahead of the uh, the curve when it came to levels. He his name, what does it mean? Cloyer Bolts the Magsman. Cloyer a pickpocket's accomplice, or one who intrudes into a bunch of thieves to claim a share. And a bolts is a package of diamonds or gold dust. Magsman is a swindler. So, again, very, very flavourful name. A swindler who snuck into a group of thieves and grabbed a bit of extra loot. Yeah, I like that. He's level 13, so he's... Uh, thieves aren't great in straight melee combat, but he's still got an armor class of 1, um, or minus 1. What's that brackets for? Is that with his dust of disappearance? Oh, he's got, he's got a dip, displacer cloak. Okay, yes, yeah, so his displacer cloak makes him minus 1. Um, good, solid... No, he's got fewer hit points than Gleep Work the Eye Biter. He has got a one lower constitution, but um, it just shows how tough Gleep Werp is. He's got a short sword plus two, displace a cloak, dust of disappearance, bag of holding to put all his loot in. Yeah, this is showing that stealth is going to be useful. Here's your man. Again, he's been raiding the budget potion section in the local supermarket. Right, let's move on to Roki Swerked. Human Cleric. Again, level 12. Plate and Shield for minus 2 armor class. He's got Mace plus 2, Plate Mail plus 2, Shield plus 2. Potion of Invisibility and Diminution. Again, this is hinting at subterfuge. Sneaking in. Roki Swerked, what does it mean? Roki means hazy, not clear. Pertain to the voice, meaning hoarse or thick. And Swerked means to become troubled. Gloomy. So, is he hoarse voiced and troubled? Or is he. Um, it's difficult to make that gloomy and hazy. Yeah. But again, there's, it, there's a flavour to the name. So, you've got a gloomy voice. Maybe it's just got a depressing voice. He talks 
looks like this. Let's look at his spells. Spells. Roki, loads of cure like wounds. That's a bit lazy. Uh, bless, find traps, hold person, silence, continual light, prayer, remove, curse, cure serious wounds, neutralize poison, commune, death touch, such as the uh, it's, uh, reverse, isn't it? Um, and you've got a finger of death, isn't it? Um, dispel evil and raise dead, then blade barrier. Again, it's it's combat. It's healing and combat. But there is a bit of the old sneakiness in there with silence 15 foot radius. So he's a powerful character. He's another powerful character. Lots of hit points as well. 70 hit points. But then he's got, what's that, 10d8 plus 2 per level due to his constitution. He's around the average. He's around the average for a, le a level 12 cleric with a, a constitution of 16. So, decent amount. Yeah, he, a cleric is going to have a decent amount of hit points at level 12. Useful character to have. Frush O'Sugil, human fighter, level 14. AC minus 5 with his shield plus 5 and 104 hit points. Now, he is level 14, but he will only picked up 10d10 10 10 10 plus... 30 for that 17 constitution. Um, then plus 3 per level after that. Was it 9d10? Did, did fighters stop at level 9 for their d10s? I think they may have done. Um, so it, it feels like he's got around the average again. I'm not going to do the maths live on uh, on this video. But Frush or Suggle, what does it mean? Frush means to crush, strike or break. And Suggle means to beat black and blue or defame. Now, I don't think in the case of this fighter, defame will be here. So, yeah, basically, he beats things up. He's hard. He's level 14 fighter. Of course he is. Spear plus three, plate plus two, shield plus five. He's got a plus one battle axe as well. Um, again, lots of healing potions and four potions of invisibility. This party, even though they've got their tooled up, they're going to be sneaking in. And if you've seen the first few, right at the very start of this adventure, for G1 in particular, if they go barging in, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun straight away. Yes, that's certain uh, feasting room, yeah. Right, Fonkin Hoddy Peak. Fonkin, high elf, fighter magic user, level 5 slash 8. Um, I should have looked up to see if this was the level limit for elves. Uh, fighter magic is he's close to it there or thereabouts Fonkin Hoddy Peak Fonkin a little fool Hoddy Peak a simpleton or blockhead so he's stupid but he's got 15 intelligence but only a nine wisdom there we go I, yeah but he's a little fool ah little fool but look, look, look at it a little bit deeper at his stats he's got 29 hit points he's got plus two hit points per level and I know not every level of magic user will have gained that plus two because you split the hit points. But he's really drawn the uh, short straw when it comes to dice rolls because his hit points will be half of 5d10 plus half of 8d4. Okay. And then on average plus two per level for constitution. That's poor. 29 hit points is very, very low for that. I mean, you'd expect somewhere in high 30s, maybe 40, I think. Doing quick maths on, uh, on, the, on live on video again. But, of course, he is a very much a utility character. Um, he's got a great dexterity. He's wearing plus two um, split mail. He's got plus two ring of protection. A ring of regeneration. Elven cloak and boots. <sighs> yeah. He's going to be sneaking around. Javelins of lightning as well. He's going to be sneaking. Even though he's in that splint mail. So yet more. Yet more sneakiness. And Fonkin Hoddy Peak. He's got fireball, slow, suggestion, ice storm, warm of fire, continual light, levitate, web. And then charm person, magic missile, read magic and sleep. So that's a decent mixture of spells. 
So even though he's not physically very strong, he's got a great armor class. Um, he's got Ring of Regeneration, and he's got the ability to evade trouble. Interesting. But he's a little fool, according to his name. Fleur Trantle. Level 9 Cleric. Right. Now, with a level 12 Cleric in there, have you drawn the short straw if you get the level 9 Cleric? Staff of Striking. Good item. Hammer. Um, plate mile plus 2. Good hit points again. Um, no, he's still decent. He's still decent in terms of in terms of his abilities. Roki's clearly a bit tougher. But you still have fun with Flirt. And what does Flirt mean? Flirt, Trantle. Flirt, deceit or fraud. Trantles, articles of little value. Oh. But he's lawful good. Maybe he has been deceived with articles of little value. So he wouldn't be the one doing the deceiving with his law being lawful good. And he's very much of value. We value you, Flirt. And he's got Commune, Dispel Evil, Neutralize Poison, Continual Light, Remove Curse, Speak with Dead, and then the usual Cure Light Wounds, Find Traps, Hold Person, Silence. He's, yeah, he, again, a useful character. Interesting name. Maybe not apt for what he is, but uh, he's a useful character. Hold on. Deceit, Fraud, Articles of Little Value. 18 Charisma. Maybe he's converted to this lawful goodness. Maybe his life didn't start out altogether lawful good. And then he became a man of the cloth. Yes, I think that's the way it was done. OK, Red Mod Dumple, Dwarf Fighter. He is physically the strongest. He's got s stacks of hit points, 82. Um, tw so it's 27, 55... It's around average, actually. But still, it's it's stacks of hit points because he's got a high constitution. Um, but a level 9 fighter with a 17 constitution will have a lot of hit points on average. It's average for his level and constitution, but it's, it's still a nice, tidy sum. 1874 strength is good. He's got a dwarven hammer plus 3, plate mark plus 1. Shield plus one, ring of invisibility, boots of striding and springing. So, again, we're looking at lots of mobility, lots of getting around without being spotted. I suppose, and against giants, though, he's got armor class of minus one anyway, with his plate and shield, because his dex isn't that great. Uh, well, 15. 15's it's good enough. I mean, all these characters have good stats. None of these characters have poor stats, especially the next one. Um, but... AC minus one, he could be under threat because the volume of fighting there is in this. But remember, dwarves get a bonus to their AC against giants, so it doesn't matter. He can stand at the front with Frush, toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Yeah, yeah. I'd happily play Red Mod. And what does Red Mod Dumple mean? Hasty or rash, it's Red Mod. And Dumple, to bend or compress into a dumpy shape. It's a good dwarven name then. He's um, short tempered and he's in a dumpy shape. Red mod dumple. Short tempered dwarf. That's basically what it means. Good name. Good name. Faffle Dwemercraft. Now, this, to those who. This might look like possibly. No, Beat Gwenders of Crudel looks like possibly the silliest name. But Faffle. Yeah, it sounds like a silly name. But if you've read. The books, the AD&D books, you'll see the term Dwemer. Dwemer is a, is a magical term. So what about Faffle? Shall we look? Faffle, Dwemercraft. That's my mouse pointer. Faffle, to blow in sudden gusts, to stammer or fumble. Dwemercraft means juggling the magical arts. There we go. So he fumbles his way through his magic. He stutters his way. So when he casts f f f f f f fireball and ch 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 charm person and and whatever t t t t t t teleport and blinks away just as the things about to hit him. Yep. Um, it's it's a good name. It's a good name. It's apt. It's a ninth level magic user. 
He's got very average hit points for 15 constitution level 9. Um, he's got a wand of frost, cloak of protection, wind, wind of... Uh, wing, wind... Wi ring of protection. Um, so let's, let's see what spells he's got. He's got pass wall on a scroll. That could have been very useful. Let's see what spells he's given. Faffle. Light, shield, magic missile, detect invisible, visibility, web, haste, invisibility, 10 foot radius, lightning bolt, confusion, ice storm, and conjure elemental. Confusion into the middle of all the drunken giants. And then put a great big elemental in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think his selection of spells is excellent. Really, really good, knowing the adventure as I do. I think that's real. yeah. I'd happily play Faffle. You have to play him carefully. 33 hit points with an AC of 2. He's, if he gets into any form of melee, he's going to get hit fairly often with an AC of 2 by lots of giants. Because there are a lot of giants in this adventure. And throughout the series. So keep him out of the way. Um, keep that, get that invisibility going. Um, sneak him round. And make him use his spells tactically. And Faffle Dwimmercraft. A stuttering juggler of magic. Very nice. The last one is Beak Gwenders of Crudel, a ninth level half elven ranger with 93 hit points because he's got constitution of 18. So that's. Again, I think it's slightly above average for a ninth level ranger because, of course, he'll have had 10 times 4, 40 added, 50, so leaving 53 from 10 d8. It's slightly above average. It's slightly above average. But it, it, it's what you'd expect from a ninth level ranger with a high, high con with a high constitution. Rangers were sacks of hit points. But what does this name mean? Beak, Gwenders of Crudel. Beak, to bask in the sun or before a fire. Gwenders, a disagreeable tingling from the cold. Crudel, to creep close, a faint humming, the low music of birds. Potentially one of these silliest sounding names. It means you've come in from the cold and you're basking in front of the fire. Um, and crudel, you creep close to the fire. Or it could equally be the low humming of birds. He's a ranger. So he's relaxing in front of the fire. The birds are chattering in the background. He's in his little hut as a ranger. So once again, his name is Perfect. What's he carry? What's he? What's he got here? Sword plus one, crossbow of speed, thirty plus two bolts, chainmail plus two, shield plus two, elven cloak and boots, sneezing dust, dust of appearance, dust of disappearance. Again, it's all about sneakery, all about sneakery. It's all about hiding and trickery. And he's going to have spells, I believe. Beak. Verifier times two and ventriloquism. There we are. There we are. So there's a run through the original, the first ever, first ever set of pre-generated characters for AD&D in an adventure. I've used G123 as the basis here because G1, the first adventure to put these in, did not have these spell lists. Um, and I hope... Those of you who didn't know, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you do know that the names actually meant something. I have mentioned it on streams before, but those who didn't know, maybe this has opened your eyes into what those names actually mean. Do you have a favourite name in here? For me, it's Faffle Dwimmercraft, closely followed by Cloyer Bolts the Magsman. But um, I know it, sound, I mean, it sounds a bit silly. It doesn't trip off the tongue. Beat Gwenders of Crudel is possibly the most apt when you look at the meanings. In fact, all of the meanings, even... You could bring a little bit of background from, from Fleur Trantle. Why is he lawful good with that, with that name? 18 Charisma. What was he up to in, in his past life? A, it's a opportunity for a bit of role-playing. Now, I'm going to look through a few of these sets of um, pre-gens over the next few months, just sort of sporadically, to see if any of them come up to the standard of this group. I don't think they will, to be honest. But we'll find out. There were certainly some interesting sets of pre-gens. In, I know I've seen it written before that it was a, always a junior member of the team at TSR who had the job of creating pre-gens. They didn't really like it. But 
I think Gygax made these. And Gygax did them in a very Gygaxian manner. Cheers, Gary. Well, thank you all for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you to, um, let me just scroll up to the top of this blog, Raging Swan for doing all this work 13 years ago to dig out those meanings. If you want to find out more of these words, I've found the book Pop Lollies and Belly Bones on Amazon. Um, and you can get a used copy for about seven or eight pounds. So it might be worth just for a little bit of uh, a bit of amusement and to give you some inspiration when it comes to coming up with your, your own names for your characters or place names or item names. Because isn't that one of the hardest parts of the game? Coming up with names for NPCs and characters. Well, I've been the old geek. I'm going to shut up now and get off. Thank you all for watching. See ya.